We all like the idea of good things in sensibly sized packages. Perhaps that's why Audi's A3 has been so successful here, a compact car that goes large on quality, refinement and maturity. Especially in this improved third generation guise where it's more sophisticated and efficient than ever before. Which is just as well given that there are other Volkswagen Group products using many of the same ingredients and plenty of tempting high profile segment rivals. In other words, this enhanced Mark III model will have to work harder than ever to win sales. Fortunately for Audi, it seems well up to the task. The premium compact car. Now if that concept means anything to you, then it's the car we look at here, Audi's A3, that might well come to mind. And this much improved third generation version will show you just how far things have recently progressed in this segment. These days, of course, this Audi faces strong competition. But back in 1996, when we first saw the A3 model line, the idea of being able to move a car up market in class and appeal without increasing its size was new and rather different. Cynics dismissed it as a way of dressing up ordinary family hatches and charging a lot more for them. Customers, though, loved the idea. By the time the second generation A3 arrived in 2003, BMW and Mercedes rivals had also arrived to swell the market. Initially, those two brands struggled to produce products good enough to overtake Audi. And the result was that nearly a quarter of a million Mark II A3s were pounding global roads by the time this third generation model first arrived in the autumn of 2012. The Ingolstadt brand knew that this car needed to be good. By this time, both BMW's 1 Series and Mercedes's A-Class had developed into contenders with more widespread appeal. And Lexus, Alfa Romeo and Volvo were all fielding fine premium compact alternatives. Audi's response was very Vorsprung durch Technik, a subtle new suit disguising the revolution beneath the bodywork that was the first outing of the Volkswagen Group's all-new MQB platform. Stiffer, more cost-effective to produce, it promised better ride and handling, and it freed up funds for the installation of an interior with quality and technology previously unseen at this price point. The result, we were promised, would be the definitive compact premium car. And the range was swiftly extended beyond this initial three-door hatch body style to include this five-door sportback variant, then a saloon, a cabriolet, and various hot hatch models. Now, it was to further cement this Audi's premium credentials that this much improved third generation A3 model range was launched in the summer of 2016. It's an update that deserves your attention given that the usual minor styling enhancements are accompanied by some genuine substance in terms of the changes made. There are two sophisticated new petrol engines, real advances in media connectivity and even the option of the fully digital Audi virtual cockpit instrument binnacle from the brand's TT Sport car. Will it all be enough for potential buyers in this segment to take a fresh look at what this car has to offer though? Let's find out. There are no significant changes in the way this improved third generation A3 model drives. Audi says that there didn't need to be and legions of satisfied customers will probably agree. What is different with this revised range, though, is the selection of TFSI petrol engines that you can get with this car as the brand seeks to expand the market share of green pump fueled variants. Uh, this part of the lineup is now topped and tailed by completely new power plants a 190 PS 2 litre unit for the really quick versions and a 115 PS 1 litre engine for entry level buyers that only needs three cylinders. In between these two options, the clever 1.4-litre cylinder-on-demand derivative that can work with either two or four cylinders, depending on the throttle load, is carried over from before, uh, but that's had its output boosted by 10 PS to 150 PS. It's also worth mentioning that all these petrol engines can now work with a freshly developed version of Audi's dual-clutch S-Tronic automatic transmission. Unlike the older six-speed S-Tronic system still used on the A3 diesel models, this improved gearbox has seven speeds, and that's one reason why it exacts far less of an efficiency penalty should you decide to choose it. Plenty to talk about then. 
Now we think that probably the most significant change is the addition of that entry level one litre model. We can imagine business buyers being disdainful at the thought of a three cylinder Audi, but private customers really shouldn't be. After all, this unit punches well above its weight with more power and torque than, say, a directly comparable four cylinder Mercedes A160, at the same time as being able to deliver well over 60 to the gallon on a regular basis as a class leading showing. Using this unit, 62 miles an hour from rest occupies 9.9 .9 seconds in the Sportback variant on the way to a 128 miles an hour maximum. Those figures you can improve to 8.2 seconds and 136 miles an hour if you pair this body style to the 150 PS 1.4 litre cylinder on demand TFSI model that I mentioned earlier. We should also tell you about that freshly developed 2-litre TFSI engine, a unit that in 190 PS guides replaces the old 1.8-litre power plant and an uprated 310 PS form is also carried over for use in the potent S3 hot hatch variant. Essentially what the engineers have done with this unit is to further maximise compression efficiency, add in a bit of power and when it works with the S-Tronic auto transmission take full advantage of the lower first gear rate ratio that the installation of a seven speed box allowed them to fit. Now, don't worry if you glazed over or we detailed those changes. What you'll be more interested to know about is the performance benefit, which essentially boils down to this. Now, previously, you had to buy a hot hatch to get 150 miles an hour and sub seven second rest to 62 miles an hour performance from this class of car. Now, a sober suited A3 2 litre TFSI can provide just that at a much lower cost to your bank balance, your image, and your insurance premium. As usual, with a powerful Audi, this two-litre engine can be mated with Quattro four-wheel drive. Uh, the extra traction optional if you go for the 190 PS model with S-Tronic transmission, or as usual, standard if your preference is for the S3 hot hatch. Uh, there are changes to the Quattro setup too. Software updates now allowing up to 100% of drive to be directed either frontwards or rearwards, depending on the grip available, uh, with priority now given to rearward torque transfer during hard driving so as to give the more enthusiast orientated level of cornering feel that will be particularly sought by S3 customers. These people will find that this potent variance delivers 10 PS more than it did previously, uh, although the impact that makes on the performance figures is inevitably fractional. 62 miles an hour from rest takes 5.3 seconds in a manual variant or 4.6 seconds if you choose a version in which the S-Tronic Auto gearbox does all that cog swapping. An awful lot of development effort's been put in here then, which makes it a pity that so few A3 bars will find it to be relevant. Uh, these being people who typically don't have either much interest in petrol power or four-wheel drive. These folk will continue to prioritise the two diesel engines that account for the vast majority of sales of this car, neither of which have been changed much as part of this update. Although Audi has, of course, ensured that they now fully meet the more uh, efficient Euro 6 mission standard. The TDI units in question are 1.6 or 2 litres in size, the smaller engine developing 110 PS and the larger one 150 PS. The lower powered version doesn't do too badly, making 62 miles an hour in 10.7 seconds en route to 124 miles an hour. But with a fairly limited 250 newton meter level of torque, it doesn't have the seamless thrusting pulling power of the larger capacity TDI variant that the majority of customers tend to prefer. This improves those figures to 8.6 seconds and 135 miles an hour. And there's also the option of quattro four wheel drive with this power plant for the few that want it. You have to have the Quattro system if you go for the 2-litre TDI engine in its uprated 184 PS state of tune, in which guys the performance figures improved to 6.9 seconds and 143 miles an hour. Enough though on engines. What about the way this third generation A3 feels on the road? It certainly remains a very sophisticated feeling thing, thanks to the attributes of the high-tech MQB chassis installed at this model's original launch, and then subsequently shared across the Volkswagen group with other similarly sized hatches like Volkswagen's Golf, uh, Skoda's Octavia and Seat's Leon. Each of these brands, of course, have the option to tune these underpinnings in any way they please. And Audi's preference has always been to prioritise stability over agility and ride over handling. 
As you'd expect, nothing's changed in that regard with this uprated model, which is why mainstream versions of this car can cover ground very quickly without doing so in an especially entertaining way. Now, if you are someone who habitually likes to push on, then you'll like the wheel selective torque control system that maximizes traction through hard cornering, uh, the feel of which can further be improved by an optional progressive steering system. And you'll want to get yourself an A3 fitted out with the brand's drive select vehicle dynamic setup, fitted as standard to all but entry level variants. Now, via comfort, Auto, uh, dynamic, efficiency or individual modes, Drive Select lets you vary the throttle response, the steering weighting and where the S-Tronic dual clutch sequential transmission is present, the gearbox shift points too. All of it theoretically enabling you to create exactly the kind of response that you're looking for. Now, the setup can alter suspension field too if you've paid extra for the Audi Magnetic Ride Adaptive Damping System and that is a really nice to have feature if you can afford it. Don't worry if you can't though, because the standard passive suspension setup is very well judged. Just be aware that Audi spoils it a bit if you go for a sporty S-line trim by including a lowered, stiffer sports setup that fortunately you can delete, as we would if you don't want it. Uh, the ride of this car is in fact one of the best things about it, thanks to a beautifully calibrated multi-link suspension setup that isn't available on more ordinary golf models and enables this car to flow fluently through the corners while nonchalantly soaking up the bumps. Exemplary standards of refinement also make a big difference here. Now, even further improved by the fitment on all models of an acoustic windscreen. As a result, this A3 retains a continuing ability to bring a luxury segment style driving experience to a sector based around more affordably priced compact models. Sophisticated styling doesn't really date very much, and the look of this third generation A3 really hasn't. Whether you choose the three door version or this five door sport back body style, there's the same conservative but classy feel with dual like finishing and razor sharp shut lines. And as before, the whole thing is built on a stiff but impressively light MQB platform that plays a major part in allowing this A3 to weigh in at around 200 kilos less than its closest rivals. And it's kept ahead in this regard by continuing to pair away weight wherever it could. Uh, the front wings and the bonnet, for example, are made not from steel but from aluminium. And the result is that this sport back body style, for example, is around 90 kilograms lighter than it was when this third generation model was first introduced. Well, the changes made to this revised model are primarily focused on the front end, where the familiar single-frame grille is now wider, more sharply contoured. The headlamps that flank it are flatter and more distinctive than before, with more modern xenon lighting replacing the old halogen units. Incorporated LED daytime running lights are standard, and as an option, you can extend the LED technology into the headlamp beams, or go further still and opt for Audi's clever Matrix LED headlamp system that's able to continually react to other road users and ambient conditions. This S-Line variant gets a restyled bumper too. From the side, it's as you were, the profile as before, marked out by what Audi calls a tornado line that uh, visually presses the car down onto the road. This uh, sharply drawn crease beginning at the headlights and extending in a curve over the wings, uh, the doors and the side panels to the tail lamps. A further lower crease just above the sills gives a flank some shape, flowing between wheel arches that house restyled alloys that are either 16, 17 or 18 inches in size, depending on the trim level you've selected. Uh, setting this sport back model apart from its three-door counterpart is this third rear side window, a feature that emphasises the wide and powerful C-pillar. At the rear, the clear-cut lines surround smarter, horizontal 3D lighting graphics. As before, there's a neat roof spoiler, and above it, the shark fin aerial that can be set up to also boost the signal of your smartphone via the Audi phone box option. Lower down, a redesigned diffuser, platinum grey finished on this S-Line model, is supposed to make this revised model look wider, and offset to the left of it are either one or two chrome-tipped exhaust tailpipes, depending on the engine you've chosen. 
time to take a seat inside and the cabin quality you'll find there really sets this car apart at its price point with a really premium feeling of quality and class. The defining feature of the dash remains these four air vents, styled to look like miniature jet engines and made up of no fewer than 30 parts, including uh, bright metal outer rings that are shaped for perfect grip. The two central vents sit above a smarter panel of ventilation controls, now has a piano black finish, plus there's a restyled three-spoke leather trimmed steering wheel. It's what you can view through this, though, that probably represents the greatest change in this environment. And we're referring to a feature that's been fitted here, the optional Audi virtual cockpit. It's a pity you have to pay extra for it, but if you can, you'll get yourself a real cabin talking point. The setup replacing the entire instrument binnacle with a 12.3 inch colour TFT screen that's fully digital and customizable with smart 3D graphics and highly detailed effects. That can be viewed in two ways. The classic display shows you a prominent speedometer, rev counter and gear indicator. And alternatively, the progressive display reduces the size of those items and brings functions like the navigation map or your media settings to the fore. Now, we are going to see many more systems of this kind in future years, but this one really sets the standard that they must all try to reach when it comes to clarity and ease of use. Anything this setup can't tell you will almost certainly be covered by the slimline MMI infotainment display that glides out from the top of the dashboard to deal with audio, informational and phone orientated functions that you can prompt via this chrome edged rotary controller in front of the gear stick. The retracting screen is now 7 inches in size across the range and it now works as standard with the useful Audi smartphone interface that through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone connectivity allows everything that you access on your handset to be duplicated onto this slide out monitor. From here, you'll also be able to access a whole raft of 4G online Wi-Fi options via the clever Audi Connect system that's fitted to all A3s, on a trial basis at least, provided you do avoid entry-level trim. Uh, the setup is powered by a super-fast LTE module that'll give you download speeds of up to 100 megabits per second and can allow you to navigate via Google Earth, Google Street View and Google Maps. Plus, it can link you into Twitter, access Google online and give you weather, news and travel information as you drive. Once you've tried it, you really won't want to be without it. At extra cost, you can further upgrade yourself to the premium MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch system we're trying here, with its crisp 3D maps, dynamic route guidance, 10 gigabyte jukebox hard drive and a DVD player. Plus, with this more advanced setup, the rotary controller comes with a touch-sensitive surface on which commands can be traced with your fingertips. Talking of touch, well, almost everything on which your fingers fall in this cabin feels good. Buttons click nicely, uh, column stalks are of high quality, you've got these lovely backlit cup holders for the gear stick, and the low rent plastics you'd find further down in some premium rivals are mostly noticeable by their absence. Only storage space could be better. The glove box is small, particularly when, as here, it's filled with media stuff and it's not lockable as standard, uh, while the door bins, they're rather compact too. We make the same comment about the console box between the front seats, although it is a useful place to put your phone, thanks to the provision of uh, an aux in point and twin USB sockets. Now, if you've gone for this car's Audi phone box option, there's even a pad in here that can charge your handset and boost its reception. So let's take a seat in the back. Now, if you're going to be regularly using the rear compartment in your A3, you really need to have opted for this sport back body style, not only because of its two extra doors, but also because this variant sits on a wheelbase that's 35 millimeters longer than the three door. And this makes a big difference to the amount of leg room you get, which is important because in all honesty, as with most cars in this segment, you really don't get a lot. A six-footer can sit behind an equally lanky driver, but it is a fairly snug fit. And as you expect from this class of car, three across the back here only works really if the people concerned are of school-going age. 
This high central transmission tunnel certainly doesn't help in that regard. A pair of modestly proportioned adults would enjoy reasonable comfort though. And there are nice touches like the spring out cup holders that pop out of this fold down central armrest. Finally, let's have a look at the boot. Uh, 365 litres in size in the 3 don model and 380 litres if you go for this slightly lengthier sportback variant. The cargo floor is flat and the opening between the wheel arches measures fully 100 centimetres, so you might well find yourself being able to fit in more than you expected. It's certainly a more versatile trunk space than the previous generation version of this car could offer, thanks to a neat floor that on uh, front-driven models can be repositioned at two different levels, depending on the height of the load that you have to carry. Lifting the cargo area floor reveals that, laudably, Audi provides a proper space saver spare wheel rather than one of those awful fiddly tyre repair kits. And with this model's extra cost storage pack, there's a stowage net in the cargo area sidewall, plus another you can spread across the boot to keep small items in place. Another option we've got here is the 40-20-40 split rear bench, which gives you a centre section through which longer items can be poked without disturbing rear seat folk. Push the rear bench fully flat and up to 1,220 litres of room is available to play with, uh, 120 litres more than can be offered by the three-door model. Price-wise, this third-generation A3 range is pitched much as it was before, so you'll need to think in terms of a 20 to £30,000 budget for the hatch versions that we're primarily considering here, or a little more if you want a top-of-the-range S3 or an e-tron plug-in hybrid variant. Now, if you want S-tronic automatic transmission, the premium over the manual gearbox is £1,550, and across the A3 lineup, there's a £620 premium if you want to upgrade from the uh, three-door to this sportback five-door body style. That e-tron version I mentioned only comes in sportback form with S-tronic automatic transmission, and it isn't available from every Audi centre, just from a network of 34 specialist outlets. Here, though, uh, we're focusing on the mainstream A3 range, and if you're shopping at the foot of it, then don't dismiss the entry-level three-cylinder, one-litre TFSI petrol model out of hand. This engine punches above its weight, and it might be an ideal choice for low-mileage private buyers who are tempted by the thought of making a saving of well over £2,000 over the next variant up in the petrol lineup. Now, that model is the 1.4-litre TFSI with its clever cylinder-on-demand technology, a car that will save you around £1,500 on the popular 2-litre TDI 150 PS version of this A3, and it makes a good alternative to that diesel derivative with identical emissions, pretty similar performance, and frugality that is very nearly as good. On to the value proposition that all those figures represent. Now, you're really not looking at very much more to own this A3 than you'd have to spend on an equivalent Volkswagen Golf that, under the skin, would use much of the same technology. As for comparisons uh, with commonplace mainstream brand contenders in this class, well, if you're looking at something like a Vauxhall Astra or a Peugeot 308, then the difference could be as much as around £4,000. Uh, while in comparison to equivalent versions of, say, a Ford Focus or a Honda Civic, the difference could narrow to as little as around £2,000. Either way, it is a premium that a lot of potential A3 buyers will be more than willing to pay, mindful of the way that this Audi will hold on to its value throughout its life cycle. Of course, uh, relatively few potential buyers will be considering this car as an alternative to a Focus or an Astra. They'll already have the glossy brochures for models like BMW's 1 Series, Mercedes A-Class, maybe even wannabe premium contenders like Volvo's V40 and Alfa Romeo's Giulietta already piling up in their in-trays. The Alpha might save you two or three thousand, but you would lose that at resale time with lower residuals and higher running costs. We think the Volvo V40 is a better alternative, but it's not a lot cheaper than this A3, and it lacks a cachet that's part and parcel of owning this car. The same is true of another would-be contender in this segment, the Citroen-derived DS4. All of which means that if badge equity is everything to you, then aside from this Audi, it's probable that nothing but a BMW 1 Series or a Mercedes A-Class will do. 
Now, the Merc starts with an immediate disadvantage against its two arch rivals in that it can't be ordered in three-door form. The engine options are fairly comparable, whichever of these three contenders you prefer, as will be the pricing if you pitch like-for-like -like versions of this A3 against equivalent 1 Series or A-Class models. If, having done so, you conclude that it is an A3 that you really want, then you're going to need to know whether Audi has been more generous with the standard equipment tally this time around. And to some extent, it has. Across the range, buyers now get Xenon headlamps with LED daytime running lights, as well as cruise control, auto headlamps and wipers, and a smartphone interface that allows them to connect into the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto systems and access handset functions via the car's center dash infotainment display. That slimline MMI colour screen remains a significant showroom selling point. It's now 7 inches in size across the range. It's electrically retractable, operable by voice, and the point from which you can make your phone Bluetooth compatible and also fiddle with an 8-speaker DAB audio system that's also accessible via controls on the restyled 3-spoke uh, leather-trimmed multifunction steering wheel. Other standard elements of A3 kit fitted even to entry-level SE models include restyled 16-inch alloy wheels, air conditioning, a rear spoiler and an alarm. Now, if you want more, it doesn't cost much extra to upgrade to SE Technic trim. It gives you smarter alloys, rear parking sensors and an MMI navigation system that allows you to trial Audi's wide range of Connect infotainment media connectivity features. Further up the range, sport models add larger 17-inch wheels, dual-zone climate control and the Audi Drive Select vehicle dynamic system, which allows you to tweak the steering, the throttle and auto gear shift characteristics to suit the way that you want to drive. Or you could stretch further into this S-line derivative, which delivers sportier body styling, even bigger 18-inch wheels, LED headlamps and the option of lowered sport suspension. Time to move on to options. Upgraded infotainment is a key part of the appeal of this revised A3, and you can get an awful lot of it by paying extra for the optional technology pack. Now here, the most important inclusion is Audi's sophisticated MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch system, with its crisp 3D map display, 10 gigabyte music hard drive, DVD player, and responsive NVIDIA graphics. Further technology pack inclusions run to a touch-sensitive surface for the MMI rotary controller so that commands can be traced with your fingertips, the Audi phone box system that wirelessly charges your smartphone and improves its reception quality via the roof antenna, and a three-year subscription to the thing that really completes that MMI setup's functionality, namely the Audi Connect connectivity system. Audi Connect is something we really need to tell you a bit more about. Now, even if you don't specify the technology pack I just mentioned, this is a setup that you'll get to try free for the first three months of A3 ownership, provided you avoid entry-level trim. It underlines uh, Audi's determination to create in this car class-leading levels of media connectivity, providing an LTE data transmission module that establishes high-speed 4G Internet 3 access and creates, in your A3, a Wi-Fi hotspot. It also allows you to navigate with images from Google Earth, access a Google Points of Interest search function with voice control, and use a web radio setup with stations from all around the world. Through the Connect system, you can access special in-car versions of your Facebook and Twitter pages, and it's possible to read, write, and send text messages and emails. The included online media streaming package gives access to millions of music tracks, and there's also a clever Audi online traffic information system that uses live traffic information to reroute you around jams. Plus, the setup can also deliver parking information, displaying details on parking lots and parking garages almost anywhere you like to go. <laughs> Truly, this is motoring in the 21st century. If you really want to underline the fact, then if budget permits, you want to pay more for the Technology Pack Advanced package that we've been trying in our test car. 
Here, the existing technology pack elements uh, we've just covered are built on by the addition of a further feature that's freshly added to the A3 model lineup. And it's one that we think you're really going to want the virtual cockpit. Now, this is a 12.3 inch TFT color display that completely replaces the instrument binnacle's conventional dials. It's totally configurable, very futuristic, and probably this model's biggest showroom talking point. The virtual cockpit can also be ordered separately if you want to add it in more affordably. Another uh, area of new optional cleverness with this car lies in what you can do with the headlamps. You can equip them with washers, upgrade them to full all-weather LED status, or add in a high-beam assist system that'll auto-dip them at night. What's really different here this time around, though, is that Audi has now made available to A3 buyers the cutting-edge Matrix LED headlamps that used to be the exclusive preserve of its boardroom-level luxury models. These incorporate sensors and an inbuilt camera that detects other road users as well as the ambient light in built up areas. The matrix system then reacts by dipping individual LEDs to prevent dazzle while still fully illuminating the remainder of the road. It can even draw from the vehicle's navigation data to anticipate corners, adjusting LEDs as you negotiate the bend. Brilliant. And other options? Well, let's start with the driving stuff. Buyers of entry-level variants that lack the Audi Drive Select vehicle dynamic system we mentioned earlier can have that setup added in if they wish. Uh, if your A3 does have the Drive Select package, then there's a further option to increase its functionality by allowing the various settings to alter suspension field too. That's if you pay extra for the Audi Magnetic Ride system. Now, that is one feature that can't be ordered with the entry-level petrol and diesel engines. Another is the progressive steering option that varies the steering ratio based on your speed, uh, so making high-speed cornering more direct and parking easier. And talking of parking, there's plenty of optional help for that. Whether you want rear parking sensors, a rear view camera, uh, the Audi Parking System Plus setup that guides you with a visual display, or even the full park assist package that actually searches for spaces and can automatically steer you into them. What else? Um, well, on a base SE spec A3, you can, of course, pay extra to get the MMI navigation system. And it's worth doing this because once you have that, you can uh, download and use a free Audi MMI Connect app on your smartphone. This allows you to do things like locate the car if you've forgotten where you parked it. And plus, you can uh, also plan a route on the app, upload it to your A3, and then use the app to update yourself on traffic conditions throughout the journey. That journey is going to be a touch more pleasant if you've upgraded the audio setup, either to the 10-speaker, 180-watt Audi sound system, or even better, to the 14-speaker, 705-watt Bang & Olufsen setup with its concert hall quality 3D surround sound. It's a feature that can also be ordered as part of a comfort and sound pack that additionally gives you heated front seats and rear parking sensors. Other key options include an advanced key keyless entry and start system, uh, privacy glass, power folding mirrors and an auto dimming rear view mirror. The steering wheel can be heated or ordered in sporty flat bottomed form. And you might also want to look at upgrading the front seats with things like heating elements, electric adjustment and four-way powered lumbar support. Choose an S3 or an S-Line variant and you can even upgrade these front chairs to embossed sport or super sport status. In terms of the aesthetics of your A3, well, if budget allows, you can really go to town. Uh, you can specify interior inlays in micrometallic silver, uh, brushed aluminium, or a carbon fibre-like optic 3D design finish. Plus, the seats can be trimmed in Milano leather, or in the case of the sports seats, with Napa hide or a leather and Alcantara combination. The cabin will also look much classier at night if you specify the LED interior lighting pack. And having that also enables you to order a panoramic glass sunroof that will fill the car with light. Outside, there's a choice of alloy wheel designs with rims that vary in size from 16 to 19 inches. 
If practical touches are a greater priority for you, then there's a storage pack that gives you storage nets for the front seat backs, the boot and the front passenger footwell, and a net you can spread across the cargo area to keep things in place, and a storage compartment under the rear seat. Uh, we would also want to protect the boot area with a reversible mat, which has a rubber underside so you can flip it over uh, when you're transporting muddy boots or muddy dogs. And we'd also want the flexibility of the split-folding rear seat bench that can split 40 20 40 so long items can be poked through between rear seat folk another thing a3 models can now be ordered with is a folding tow bar and that swivels out of the way when you don't need it and uh, sport back variants like this one can also be specified with black or aluminium roof rails onto which can be clipped luggage boxes and carriers for things like skis snowboards and bikes so on to safety now, there's nothing especially noteworthy about the standard kit tally in this respect, although a five-star Euro ANCAP showing is justified by the usual twin front side and head airbags, plus an e-bag for the driver, along with ISOFIX charge seat fastenings, a tyre pressure warning light, and an active bonnet designed to reduce pedestrian injuries. The usual electronic assistance for braking and stability control is included, as well as adaptive brake lights that flash during emergency stops to warn following motorists. There's also driver rest recommendation technology that assesses your driving style and it shows a warning if it detects a decline in attentiveness, prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee. It does seem a little bit mean, though, to make A3 buyers pay extra for the hill hold assist feature that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And it'd also be nice if the brand could include its clever Audi PreSense Basic system that tightens the seat belts, uh, closes the windows and activates the hazard warning lights if the electronics suggest that a crash impact is imminent. The really sophisticated electronic safety features are all on the options list. And here, we'd particularly want to look at three key elements. The first is called Audi Side Assist, a system that stops you from pulling out to overtake when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And it also includes a feature called Cross Traffic Assist Rear that alerts you to oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a parking space. Secondly, there's Adaptive Cruise Control that automatically keeps you a safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. And thirdly, there's a set that the brand calls PreSense Front with pedestrian uh, recognition that scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards. Now, if one's detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, then the system will automatically brake the car to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Now, should such a crash still happen, then it's reassuring that the PreSense Front package also includes a welcome multi-collision brake assist feature that'll brake the car after you've hit something to decrease the otherwise very likely possibility that you'll go on to hit something or someone else. Now, rather than uh, ordering those adaptive cruise control, side assist and pre-sense front features separately, you might choose to get them packaged up in one of the brand's optional driver assistance packs. Go for such a pack and you also get active lane assist to help you stay in lane and a traffic sign recognition feature that works if your car's been fitted out with navigation. Plus, Audi will also throw in the parking system plus and high beam assist features I mentioned previously. On an S-Tronic Automatic A3, the driver assistance pack includes two further features. A clever traffic jam assist feature that will allow the car to effectively drive itself at speeds of uh, up to 37 miles an hour in heavy traffic. And an emergency assist setup that works when the active lane assist and adaptive cruise control systems are active, monitoring your reactions. If the electronics sense no driver activity, let's say you were suddenly taken ill, for example, then if the warnings aren't responded to, the car will be held in lane and gradually, automatically, completely brought to a standstill. It's all very reassuring. The light weight of this third generation A3 is obviously a major advantage when it comes to matters of efficiency. And depending on the derivative you choose, the curb weight will come in either just above or just below 1200 kilos, which makes this car around 200 kilos lighter than equivalent versions of its two closest rivals, BMW's 1 Series or Mercedes A-Class. 
Now think about that just for a moment. We are talking about a reduction equivalent to the saving you make if your A3 was full of passengers and then you ask most of them to get out and walk. <laughs> the result is the lightest contender in the compact premium hatch segment. Despite this, Audi also being one of the more spacious models of this kind that you can buy. Of course, there is more to the efficiency of this car than merely a weight-saving program. And as you'd expect, this A3 makes good use of all the latest eco technology. Things like a stop-start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, and brake energy recuperation, which recycles energy that you'd otherwise lose when you're braking or cruising. Uh, there's also a climate control system that can be used in a highly economic eco mode. Uh, an efficiency setting you can choose on the drive select vehicle dynamic dynamic system, uh, an efficiency program that you'll find on the onboard computer that gives you fuel saving tips, a gear shift indicator and also small spoilers in front of the wheels that help to better guide the airflow. The CO2 savings achieved as a result of all this will, Audi reckons, uh, reduce a typical A3's greenhouse gas emissions by about two metric tonnes over its lifetime. It's also worth pointing out that at the end of its life, over 95% of this car can be recycled. I'm driving the five-door sportback version at the moment, and as you might expect, this body style is a little heavier than its three-door counterpart. Around 30 kilos heavier in its petrol geysers, and around 15 kilos weightier in the case of the diesel derivatives. Although the fuel and CO2 figures Audi quotes for it are exactly the same as those achieved by the three-door variant. Have a look at those readings if you're shopping for a petrol-powered A3 and you really see the benefit of all the weight savings we mentioned earlier. An entry-level 1.0-litre TFSI variant, for example, manages 62.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 104 grams per kilometre of CO2 from its three-cylinder engine, the first time that a unit of this size has been used in an A3. Now, to put that in perspective, it means that this particular variant will go 7 to 10 miles further on every gallon and put out 12 to 20 grams less of CO2 than equivalent entry-level petrol versions of rival Mercedes A-Class and BMW 1 Series models. So, impressive. Other A3 petrol variants retain this same kind of advantage over direct Mercedes and BMW alternatives. The now even more efficient 1.4-litre TFSI version, aided by clever cylinder-on-demand technology that sees this four-cylinder engine running on only two of its cylinders at low to mid-throttle speeds. Thanks to that, this variant manages a combined cycle figure of 62.8 miles per gallon and a CO2 showing of 105 grams per kilometre, which is not far off diesel standards, but at the same time as running on cheaper green pump fuel. If you want to achieve even better results, then your Audi Centre will suggest a drive in the A3 Sportback e-tron model as another variant to use a 1.4 litre TFSI 150 PS petrol power. Here though you get a more conventional 1.4 litre TFSI unit paired alongside a 100 PS electric motor and an 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery you can recharge in just over two hours from a 380 volt three phase current supply. Keep this topped up and some unlikely sounding efficiency figures are supposed to be possible. 176.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and a squeaky clean 37 grams per kilometer of CO2. If efficient high performance is your priority, then it's worth shifting your attention towards the top of the A3 petrol range, where a freshly developed 190 PS 2 litre TFSI engine replaces the previous 1.8 litre TFSI unit and promises impressive speed with eminent sensibility. It makes this particular A3 significantly more frugal than other comparably powerful contenders in the segment, using clever combustion technology to achieve 50.4 miles per gallon and 129 grams per kilometer, which really isn't bad for a 150 miles an hour fast hatch able to sprint to 62 miles an hour in under seven seconds. The same engine, uprated to 310 PS and mated to quattro four-wheel drive, can deliver up to 44.1 miles per gallon and 146 grams per kilometre of CO2 in the hot hatch S3 variants, provided you specify it with efficient S-tronic auto transmission. So far then, the running cost report card is impressive in comparison to the segment standard. Where Audi does need to pull its socks up slightly though is when it comes to the return of the base A3 diesel variant, the 1.6 litre TDI 110 PS model. 
are taken out of context, you might be pretty pleased with the figures achieved by that derivative. Uh, 74.3 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 99 grams per kilometre of CO2. The truth is, though, that rival Merck A180D and BMW 116D rivals slightly improve on these returns by a small but possibly crucial amount. And you can bet that Ingolstadt's engineering department are working hard on rectifying that. Switch your attention to the more popular A3 2-litre TDI 150 PS variant and you'll find that normal service is resumed. The readings provided, 70.6 miles per gallon and 105 grams per kilometre, are almost identical to those of an equivalent BMW 118D and slightly better than those of a comparable Mercedes A200D. Just bear in mind that adding in S-Tronic Auto Transmission makes quite a difference here. The diesel A3 variants use an older 6-speed auto box that's less efficient than the more modern 7-speed S-Tronic system used in petrol A3 models. So as a result, a 2-litre TDI 150 PS S-Tronic variant will take you around 6 fewer miles than every gallon and put out around 11 grams per kilometre more of CO2 than the manual version, which is worth knowing. Another way of severely denting the running cost returns of your A3 2-litre TDI is to saddle it with the weight of the optional Quattro four-wheel drive system. Add that in and you can expect 58.9 miles per gallon and around 125 grams per kilometre of CO2 whether you opt for your A3 2 litre TDI Quattro with 150 PS and a manual gearbox or with 184 PS and S-Tronic auto transmission. Now bear in mind that all the figures we've quoted in this section are based on the variant in question uh, running on standard size wheels. As usual, if you opt for larger rims it's going to have a small but possibly significant impact on your figures. As for depreciation, well, independent specialist Cap Monitor reckon that mainstream A3 variants will be worth 41 to 42% of what you originally paid for it after the usual industry standard uh, three year, 60,000 mile operating period. Uh, to give you some perspective, that's typically a fraction ahead of the BMW 1 series and either the same or a fraction behind a comparable Mercedes A-Class. Now, where things differ a little in this regard is when it comes to the S3 hot hatch. That's a variant which is apparently priced by the market very highly and, according to CAP, is able to realise up to 48% of its original value over the same period. Crunch all these readings in together with the fuel and CO2 shown we covered earlier and you end up with a predictably competitive set of pence per mile figures for the A3 lineup. Uh, most business buyers will be looking at one of the mainstream diesel variants and if that's where your interest lies then you'll find that a 1.6 TDI matches class standard around 32 pence per mile while the 34.72 pence per mile showing of the 2 litre TDI 150 PS variant is only fractionally behind its direct BMW and Mercedes rivals. Again, these are cap monitor figures based on a three-year, 60,000-mile operating period. Interestingly, uh, they reveal that if you look beyond the Audi, BMW and Mercedes models in this segment, let's say it's something comparable like a uh, Volvo V40, the overall running cost penalty will be around two pence per mile, which would certainly add up over time. It is, in other words, a case of considering the bigger picture. And once you do, you begin to understand just why so many people choose to pay a little extra to own a car like this A3, rather than, say, a similarly sized, well-equipped Focus or Astra. Mainstream models like those have improved substantially in recent years, but the market still highly values a smarter badge on the bonnet, which means that as long as you can afford the initial outlay and you don't go too mad on the options list, a premium branded model like this Audi is always going to work out cheaper to own. Further assistance in this regard is provided by a fixed price servicing plan that can cover you for between three and five years. In fact, this car can even book its own service appointments via an Audi Connect safety and service system. As well as providing emergency calling and online roadside assistance, this feature can, at the appropriate time, send a service request direct to your local dealer. So, on to the warranty. All cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas BMW and Mercedes don't limit your mileage in this period, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost warranty packages can extend the cover to either four years and 75,000 miles or five years and 90,000 miles. 
So let's finish by running through what is a pretty competitive set of insurance groupings. These see a base 1 litre TFSI petrol variant rated at group 15E, the 1.4 and 2 litre TFSI 190 PS variants rated at group 21E, and the S3 hot hatch rated at group 36E. In the diesel range, the 1.6 TDI is rated at Group 17E, the 2.0-litre TDI 150 PS variant is rated at Group 23E, and the 2.0-litre TDI 184 PS model is rated at Group 28E. In the search for a compact car that's also a premium purchase, there are probably more charismatic choices than this Audi A3, but we think there are a few better ones. Light in bulk, heavy in technology. It's a logical evolution of a breed that's long been one of Britain's favourite company cars. This improved version might look a little different at first glance, but it'll feel so if you specify the clever virtual cockpit technology and get to grips with the enhanced media connectivity. We also think the introduction of one litre, three-cylinder petrol power at the foot of the range is even more significant. If your annual mileage is low, then you really shouldn't automatically tick the box for a TDI without considering it. Otherwise, though, things are much as before, which means that there's a lot to like. If you're one of those still questioning the need for a premium people's hatch, then in this Audi, you have your answer. From the outside, it's as at home in Belgravia as it is in Brixton. But the interior is where the design really strides apart. You could be in a luxury car. And, of course, in many ways, you are. By pioneering the premium compact hatch segment with original versions of this model, Audi has in many ways redefined the meaning of automotive luxury, democratising it without the desirability being diluted. Other brands claim to have done the same, of course, and many have used a few more visual or dynamic fireworks to grab the attention. Ingolstadt, though, doesn't think this A3 needs them, and legions of loyal global buyers seem to agree. Cool classless and clever. It remains desirably definitive.